Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to show you how you can make your very own window with a decorative top. Alright guys, so my dad's going to tell you exactly how we made these windows. Alright, he's gathering some wood up to show you. Alright, these are already cut. Put that there. Put that there. This is 3 16 by 8. The plywood is 3 16 of an inch, so you want to have the 3 16 standing up in this jig. The jig was made an eighth of an inch wider and a quarter of an inch longer than the intended size for the window. So now I got this mark, I'll show you how this goes. There's a piece there. When you draw your pencil mark, always leave the pencil mark on there and make sure you got a nice sharp pencil. Because if you don't, you're gonna not you're gonna either be a hair too big or a hair too small. And this is the side that makes a nice sharp cut and there you can see the barely see the pencil mark. And we're just using a miter saw. And this goes in here. Just like that. Goes in there. And the reason that we make it a quarter inch longer is when we put it the other pieces in there. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap here and I'll show you how I buried it. A piece of scrap will go in here and hold all this together so it don't swim around on you while the glue is drying. It'll go in there like that. You'll put one, two, and three, four. Okay? Also, you're going to want to line your jig with wax paper. That way the glue doesn't stick to the actual wood of your jig. And basically what this is is a piece of plywood, plywood mm -hmm. cut, and then we cut thinner pieces and glued them on top of it. We left an opening here and an opening here so that we could wedge <coughs> it in there so that it can dry like this. Otherwise, if you draw, let it dry by itself, it may be off square. So this is a sure way to keep it from being crooked. Now, here's the finished product that goes in there. And what I did was mark the corner that I made sure was absolutely square. From this corner to that corner, I just marked it. So if you push everything this way, it'll be the intended size. There's a little piece that goes in here to hold it together. Now the bottom here you can actually make wider if your board is a little bit wider, but you just have to make it the size for this board because you want this to fit snug. Yeah, and if, if it's got a little bit of pressure in there, but once you put the glue here and here on your corners, if it, you've got a little play, if you can't get anything in there thick enough, just take the back of your knife and shove it down in there like that. And that'll hold it snug till you glue it. Now, to make the sash for the window, this is a, a, a fun part that you're going to love. Do it like this. Here's the pieces I already cut. I'm going to show you how I did it. Take it like this. Put it in there. Nice sharp pencil. You gotta have a sharp pencil. You put that right up against there. Then right up against here. Nice sharp pencil. Make a little tiny pencil mark. See it? Now you put that in a miter and you leave that pencil mark. This will go in here. 
nice and snug. Yeah, nice and snug. You do all four sides like that. Nice and snug. Here's the ones that are already cut. This one goes in here. That one goes in there. I'm going to turn it the other way. That way. This one goes in here. If I can get my fingers to working. You have that flipped. Yeah. And you cut that one, Dad. did was I marked it, but I marked it on here, I had it upside down, two and a half inches because this was five inches overall, so. This goes in here, like that, and that's your window. Once you glue that together, it'll fit inside of this, and this fits inside your frame. Now, this is for 3 16 This is the part that he just did right here. How it's got the piece around here, that's the part you glue your plastic to, or your plexi, whatever you're using for your window. Goes over. This is what I did, what it looks like on the outside. This goes over your window with a it'll glue to your frame. This is a 3 16 walls, exterior walls, interior walls are all 3 16 If you happen to have quarter inch, I made one with quarter inch, it works the same way. Now, this, you can see, this is five inches this way, and this way, is Three and one eighth. Same way with the bottom. Three and one eighth. Three and a sixteenth on the bottom because you want it to look a little different than up and down. That gets. This goes in your frame. You can glue this to it once you get it all done. What's easier to keep it together is to take masking tape, put the masking tape on the bottom of it. Get yourself a little cup or something, put some glue in. Right here. And a piece of stick or anything. Put the glue in there, you dip it up. The masking tape will let you put it back. And you do the same thing here. Masking tape, glue here. And the glue there. Right. And that's what it'll look like when you get it done. I have a jig over there that holds all this together, but I didn't. I, you've seen how the jigs work. Okay, so basically you're cutting two of the sides and then one at the top and one at the bottom. You can cut them the same size. It don't have to, I just cut a little bit shorter because I wanted it set back. Then you just yeah. put a little 45 on it about halfway up. And then this piece here is what? That's a quarter by uh, half. And that's well, this for is a quarter the by half or quarter by three eighths or quarter by five sixteenths, whatever you, how far you want it to stick out. But that, the jig over there is the one that I use for this. And it holds it in. You can keep it down like that. You can take those little black clamps and put them little black clamps on the corners to hold this. But basically, once you get it glued, if you got it something flat, put it on some wax paper. Let it dry, put something set on top of it right there. Then the top piece goes on top of this. Okay, now for the top piece, we're using molding that we bought at Home Depot. It's a specialty trim, it's very, very small, and um, it's not very wide, so it works out perfect for the dollhouse. Uh, this will go on top of there like that when it's glued. Once you get it all ready to glue it to get all together, you can set it in. 
your window. Okay, now how did you make this? Alright, this is two 45 degree angles. You gotta allow for this setback because of the thickness of this, you want it to sit up close to your dollhouse. You can keep that like that and have a little bit of reveal there or you can bring it all the way down. I like it with a little bit of a re reveal. Okay, so basically he took this board or this molding and he cut 45, 45, and then did it again for the sides. You want to show him? Yeah. Here you go. He's going to show you how to do it. This is a homemade mother box. But the one it came with was plastic and we didn't like it. Okay, so he's got a small piece now and he's going to cut it. Got a 45 degree angle. Now, which way is the 45 going? 45 going is going so you can, it's going in towards the center. Okay, so that's the first 45, and see how it goes inward. All right, and I'll cut the other 45. Let me see. See how it's going inward? There you go. Well, just so I don't waste the wood, I'll just go on this side, do the other 45, and then cut it off. Let me do it right here. That would be... Uh, Now. Okay, now you need to cut the other the other yeah. side, and you're gonna do that at a 45 inward as you well. Put your put your mark the length, right, and then the direction you want to go in, so you don't get it confused, and you'll leave this pencil mark on the very edge. Don't rush cutting it, because if you do, your saw will bind up on you. You want to go back and forth, let move it back and forth, let the saw do the cutting. Just keep moving it back and forth. It'll go through there, it'll take you a little longer, but it'll go through there and have a nice clean cut. I'll show you when we finish. Alright. Now, I finish cutting it. Take your time, you get a nice smooth cut. Yeah. No saw marks, no ridges, no nothing. Just a nice clean cut on both sides. Now I'll show you the other angle so we can uh, join it together here. Now, this is your your head piece that goes across the top of the window, right? and this will be the side. As you can see, if you take your time, you get a perfect angle and a perfect cut. See how that miter is? Perfect. You can't ask for nothing better. Now, you want the thickness of this because it's going to go back over top of here. It goes over top of that window like that. So you want it to drop down some. So we'll just take a piece of scrap. We already know it's eighth of an inch, but you can do it this way. Or right there, and then just mark it where you want to cut it at. And you'll cut it off straight. Like that mark.
And you're going to keep the one half of the 45 and the other half is going to be a straight cut. Because that's the half that's going to go up against the house. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and mark the other side and do exactly the same thing on the opposite direction. As you can see, we have done these and they meet. So now we need to create the opposite side so that that meets. Okay, once you have both of them cut, you're going to glue them together on the corners at a 45, just like that. Alright, now that um, both pieces are cut, let me see that one, you'll be able to put them together put with the 45s. And the best way to put the glue on it is to put a dab that's it just a little dab you don't want a lot that's plenty there doesn't want to come out because he had it standing up. If you keep your glue sideways, it comes out a little bit quicker because you don't have to wait for it to get to the bottom. Now, what I do is I tuck it on there and rub it around. Use this piece to rub it around. Wax paper is your friend when you're gluing, just in case you didn't know that. Um, because the glue from Elmer's, and we're using the Elmer's Wood Glue Max, does not stick to the wax paper. It may for a second, but it comes right off. Yeah, but it doesn't really stick. And you want to make sure you're, you're even. And you put that together like that. You, got. you don't need any clamps or anything because it's not that big of an object. And it'll stay together with you. You can just leave it sit on the wax paper and dry. All right. Now for this little bottom piece here. This is the same size. Little bottom piece. You can make it a, a the same width as the top. So you got two here and two there. <laughs> and you want to make it a quarter inch. So we'll take it a quarter inch. Right to here. And if you're good with your fingers, you can just mark it like that and go right down here, and that's where you want to cut it at. Okay? If not, you can just measure each side of the quarter inch. a quarter inch. inch on each side. And you'll put that in the mitre box and cut that off with a quarter inch. That's where, you, where your line starts. That's where you want the saw to start. Right there. If you can see it. Mm-hmm. See it? Yep. There. And you do the same thing on this side. If you're not ambidextrous, you can flip it over and cut the other side in the same direction this way. You know, I think that's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
There you have it. And that's how you do that. The interior window, you want to do the same thing. But if you want to put a sill in it, use this thickness for the sill. You'll make, you'll make a frame like this. Two here and two here. If you want a sill, then you'll have to use some of this stuff for a sill, like this. You'll cut it instead of this big thick one. You'll put a small sill in like that, out of the same stuff. Okay. Know. So, in case you don't understand what he's saying, basically, if you look at this piece here, it's thin, right? And then the bottom is squared off. You don't need to round that off or cut it at a 45. And then instead of using that thick piece for the exterior, you're going to use a thinner piece for the interior. Okay. Okay, that's it. Just like that. Yeah. This would be on the inside, like this. The interior. Okay, so this here would be the exterior you're going to do the exact same thing without the 45s for an interior and you're going to use the same size board you have up here here instead of the thicker one for the interior okay this is going to be your frame for your window and then that'll go on top of that like that once you have it all glued together And of course, you'll even it up and everything. And then this will go on top of here with a reveal. Now, to make sure that's even, you could always use like a little stick for the distance that you want and then glue it. But none of this is glued together yet because we were just doing it as a tutorial. And then if you have a thicker piece of wood for your dollhouse as opposed to the thinner, you would just make it with the thicker wood instead of the thinner wood. And that is it. And you're, you're knocking it apart. Yep. <laughs> okay, so here's the interior of the window. Here's another one we did, and then another one we have here. We did the same kind of idea for these here, except for we put a top on here, and I have a tutorial on that. Now, they're not all the way nailed in yet, but that's for the curtains that hang behind. Okay, and then for the bay windows, we made the frame the same way we made those frames, only we didn't add the extra piece here at the bottom. We just did a complete square frame because we're going to do a window seat there. But here is the thinner ledge that I was talking to about to as opposed bottom. to the thicker one. See how it's thick right there? Show them top and bottom the same size and the two sides yep. are the same size. Now, I did learn that if I put the glue here, you see it when it dries. So I would recommend that you use two-sided tape. We learned that lesson the hard way. So next dollhouse won't have that. As you can see, that's got two-sided tape on it, and you can't even tell where it stops and where it finishes. That's the upper windows. Okay, so here they are on the outside. Again. Here's some bay windows that we did. We did those a little bit different, but basically it's the same logic behind it. And then there's a double window. We actually just put an extra board in the middle of it. And then one on the porch. And then this is the largest bay window. The bay windows, we couldn't put the middle piece of wood that goes there because if we would have, there would have been no window if we would have put a frame around here because inside it's too skinny. So it would have been pointless to put that piece of wood there. 
Alright, thanks for watching and follow Dollhouse Mantra Madness and tutorials for more DIY. Also, I'm on Pinterest, so if you want to look up Laurie Holden Heisler, you can find a bunch of pens about dollhouses under my dollhouse board that I've been gathering up from all over Pinterest, which is pretty cool. That a lot of people post stuff on there. But um anyway, just follow and like and subscribe below, leave your comment, and if you decide to make a window, post a picture on my Facebook page and Show me what you did and how it turned out. I'd love to see it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.